Hi guys. Uh, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and today we are painting feathers and I'm gonna go through um, kind of, we're gonna do four steps on how to paint a feather and um, let's start with step number one. So this is our project here that we have going on. And when you do feathers, what I like to do, the first step is you want to start with the stem because then that's just gonna define where it starts, where it ends, how, um, where the middle is, all that stuff. It's kind of like a good base to start. And then I establish where the body of the feather goes and then that's where you can kind of play with the whole shape of the feather as a whole. And then if you're doing details such as dots or stripes, you're gonna put those in there. And then the very last step we do is we do kind of detail lines, we do the feather textures on the edges. So let's get started. So for my first feather here that I did, I'm mixing ice blue and black together to get this really wonderful kind of like navy, which is one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to start with my stem. Now I'm just using a round six, so I'm gonna get a nice thin line on this with light pressure. And I don't wanna to start too far over because then um, the belly of my feather can't be too thick. So I'm gonna start probably like two inches over on my paper, two or three. And then I'm just gonna do my stem. Just have that kind of go up. Now you want the bottom of your stem to be thicker. So usually I'll do my line and then make the bottom a little bit thicker and go across like that. So here's my stem. So now I'm going to do the body of the feather. So usually what I like to do is I like to just use like a light wash or almost just clean water to kind of uh, make the shape of my feather. And um, for my feathers, I like them to start um, kind of more narrowed towards the middle. And then as they go out, they go wide and then they kind of come back in here. Now on this side, I'm gonna let the stem touch the wash, so it's gonna bleed a little bit. So I established the right side of my body and now I'm gonna establish the left side of my body. But when I do that, I'm gonna leave a white space, a very thin white space in between um, this side of the body and this stem. So I leave the white space in between because I think feathers look a little bit more realistic when there is kind of like a white vein. And so instead of going back over with white paint to put in the white vein, we just kind of leave that white space there. So I'm gonna do my body here. And then while it's still wet, we'd start dropping in our color. Now for this first leaf, and this is where you would put in patterns. So now we're on to step three, which is doing the detail or doing the patterns of the feather. So I just, on this one, I just dropped in color. Just washes and really let it bleed out on its own, kind of play around. I like it when the color is nice and dark towards the bottom, so you just get more kind of paint on your brush and then to make it so it wasn't such a strong outline in the middle, I'm kind of putting a dark wash towards the middle. Now, as you can see, mine crossed that little threshold, and threshold of this white line and bled through, but that's okay. If that happens to you, don't worry about it because we're just gonna color this side anyway. And then now I'm gonna drop in some lighter blue. This one is just the ice blue without any of the black, just to get some good color in here. So once you feel pretty good about where, about how your pattern's looking, the texture, all that stuff, we can move on to the last step. Now I'm just gonna add a couple of water droplets in here just to get some different textures. I'm gonna do one more drop of this really dark blue down here on both sides. Okay, and then now what we're going to do for our final step is we're gonna do like the edges of the feather and get those like feathery looks. Now with a round brush, we wanna use a round brush on this because we get a thick to thin line in one stroke. And that's kind of how we get these, um, you're gonna kind of like swoop out and then as you go out, your pressure is gonna get lighter and then that way you get a thinner line. So it's gonna be kind of like this. So just going along the edge. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, um, just in some places. We just kind of swoop 
out. And then when we get to the edge, I like to have it in a point. And you kind of just swoop on both sides here. Just like that. And then on the very end here where the feather first meets the um, stem, we're gonna do tiny little um, tiny little feathers because you know how feathers have all those like little parts to it and then at, usually at the very bottom they're kind of frayed out that's what we're going to try and do here so I'm still using my round six just light pressure I'm just going to do a couple little things that kind of go they're going to go out and a little down and then and then if you want to like add a couple more color drops or if a spot is bothering you that you want to fix this is it this is the time to do it I'm going to add a little bit more color on this side here and that's it those are our four steps to make our first feather so the first step we did was we did the stem and that just kind of defined how long our feather was and where the space goes the second step is we put down water to do our body of the feather the third step was adding pattern or color. And then the final step was doing these detail feather textures here on the ends. Now for our second feather that we're gonna do, I'm just using just mahogany on this color. And I love this mahogany color because it's actually like this really beautiful purple, like this deep purple. I'm gonna move a few inches over. I wanna make sure that I leave room to where I can do the width of my feather. So it's not gonna be right next to it or else it will run into this when I go and do the body. So I'm gonna move over and do my stem. And I had it roughly the same size. And then I'm gonna thicken the bottom here. And there's my first step for my feather. Now on this feather, because there are stripes, I'm pretty much gonna combine step two and three, which is the body and the pattern. Now I'm going to put down my pattern as I'm shaping the body. And because these are stripes, I do a chunk here and another chunk here. And they're just, um, these are just um, long dashes. They don't have to be completely, I, you know, I'm not filling it in like this because I feel like with feathers, they're not perfectly horizontal stripes. They're some kind of like go out longer than others. And then I'm just gonna do this all the way up, putting these stripes in on both sides. So this one, I'm combining step two and three, just on this stripey one. Because if I were to put in my body first with just water and then I tried to put in the stripes, it would bleed everywhere. And so um, in order to minimize that and keep my stripes, I'm gonna do that while shaping it. So with my feather, I first kind of go out and then as I go near the top, it gets more narrow here, just like that. And then what I'm going to do with this one is um, after that has dried for a few seconds, I'm going to go back in and just use water to blend these areas together. I don't want to do that right away though while it's super wet because then it's just going to bleed everywhere. So while, while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to do um, just some feather textures here. Now you can always come back to this, which actually I think would probably be the best thing to do. So while that dries, before I finish um, filling everything in, I'm going to move on to the net, next feather and that way it won't just bleed everywhere and be kind of messy. So on this one, I'm doing a mixture of iris blue and black. And you get this really pretty, like purpley, it's, it's a navy, but it's more on the purple side or the gray side. And I'm going to do my stem first. Remember to give yourself some space to do the other side of the feather so it's not right next to it. So I'm gonna do my stem. And they don't have to be a perfect straight line up and down. You see this one kind of has a curve in it. That's fine. I like mine to have a little bit of a curve because feathers themselves sometimes are curvy, but if it can be both. You can have some that are totally straight up and down. You can have some that are more curvy. 
it's whatever you prefer. So I put in my stem, which is my first step, and then my second step is shaping my body. So this one I'm just using water. I'm just gonna kinda go up on one side. Now because my water is dirty, um, it has like a gray color to that, but that's fine. Cause I'm gonna put my own color in anyway. Okay, so I put on my body, that's step two. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our color or our patterns. So this one I did kind of like a polka dot at the bottom, cause you know how some feathers are, are dotted. Now this is wet, so it is going to bleed a little bit, um, but I embraced that. I don't want them to be totally perfect dots. If you want them to be totally perfect dots, then you just wait for this wash to dry before you put your dots in. So I'm just gonna go through. And I didn't speckle the entire feather, I just did kind of the bottom. And then near the top, I just um, put in color and let that kind of bleed and play around. Now I really like when watercolor kind of bleeds together and does different textures and all these interesting things. So that's why I'm a little bit more loose with my feather. And I think it makes all your feathers look a little bit more different um, from each other. They're always gonna turn out different. Okay, so I put in my pattern, and then now I'm gonna move on to the final step, which is doing the details and that, that feather texture. So I'm gonna pick up some more paint, and then starting along the bottom, I'm gonna start doing some feather textures along the edge. Now to remember to do that swoosh and to go um, lighter as you go out because then that's gonna thin up your, your mark. And I do a little bit at the top too. I mainly do it at the bottom and at the top, not too much in the middle. You can see here that in the middle I kind of leave it smooth. Go up at the top here. And then we're going to do a little detail feathers that meet the vein here, or meet the stem, I guess. And then this is where you can just do any last minute color additions, shading. And I might drop in a little bit brighter color. I got this. Okay, and now we're gonna go to our last feather here. And this one is a combination of the sepia and the ice blue. So that's how you get this like interesting, I went for multiple colors here. So at the top, um, it's less of the brown, which is why it's still green, and then the bottom is just straight sepia. So I'm gonna do my stem. And usually you do your stem within the same color that you're doing your leaf. I mean, <laughs> the same color as you do your feather. So then um, step one, we did our um, stem or the vein of the feather. And then step two, we're gonna do our body. Now this one, I'm doing a really light wash because we're actually doing two different colors here. Well, three total because we're kind of leaving the middle section white. So I'm kind of just putting my body in. Like that. And then we're gonna start putting in our color or our pattern. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the sepia with the black to get a nice dark color here. Maybe a little mahogany too. You can always play with it as you go. Usually I don't make color choices until I'm like right there painting it, but that's just me. So I'm gonna put in my brown here. And then I'm kinda gonna blend out a little bit at the top so it's not super streaky. And then at the very top, I'm gonna add in the color, and I'm mixing the 
the ice blue with the sepia. And I'm getting this really great, like bluish green color. And then this middle section, I'm gonna just kind of leave. I might put a little bit of color in, but I don't wanna to touch it too much because I, I want it to come across as white. Now we don't leave it totally white on the paper um, because then that would just be too white and it wouldn't look like there's anything there. It would just look unfinished. Even white in watercolor has a slight um, color to it, whether it's gray or green or blue, there's still a little bit of something on there. And then I'm gonna go in and do my detail work on the bottom here. Do my feather textures. And a lot of this that I'm dropping in this color, is just gonna bleed out and that's okay. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And I want a little bit more color on the top here. I'm still kind of putting those feather textures in. And I'm gonna thicken up my stem. I forgot to thicken up my stem here at the bottom. Just like that. Now I'm gonna go back to the second leaf that I never finished. It's dry enough now that I'm just gonna take my water and just go in between there and add water and kind of blend those sections together. Now it's gonna get a little bit messy, it's gonna bleed a little bit, but um, I like that. And I think that's just gonna make your painting a little bit more interesting to have the different textures going on. Now remember to use your paper towel here if you're picking up too much color and you like that, I wanna lighten it. I'm just going to lift up with my brush and pat it on my paper towel. So almost like you're wiping the paint away here. Now if you lost too much, you can go back in and do the stripes again. And these ones we can just let bleed a little bit. They shouldn't be so wet that it will go everywhere. Okay, and then we're gonna shape our feather a little bit more. Make sure we get these nice feather textures here. Remember when you're doing feathers, you wanna do those four steps. You wanna start with the stem, that's just gonna tell you how long it is, where you should start your feather and where it ends. The second part is you wanna add your body. Usually I just do that with a wash, um, but it depends on what kind of feather you're painting. And then the third step is we put in our pattern. So if you wanna do spots, if you wanna do stripes, or if you just wanna do crazy color, that's where you drop it in. And especially if it's already wet, that's where it's cool because it's going to blend out. And then the last one is just doing the feather textures near the base of the feather where it meets the stem and kind of near the top. You want to have those little textures out there so it's really clear that this is a feather. Thank you so much. So we just finished our feathers project. Hopefully that tutorial style was helpful and informative and more organized. You can get our feather kits through our subscription box or you can just order it at buy a kit by itself just through our website. Uh, if you like the way that tutorial felt, um, you can please let us know. Or if you want us to go back to our old tutorial style, just let us know, comment, give us feedback. We really just wanna make this easier for you. Thanks so much.